Hello everyone. My name is Mike Berge and I've been asked to do the January installment of the Family of Faith. Um, I want to start out with a prayer. Uh, so let's do it in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gifts that you've given us all of the different times we see them, and especially the ones that we don't. Continue to fill us with your blessings and your graces, and give us the strength to be firm in our faith, to know you, to know the truth, and to look for the truth, to truly come after you, and to be the people that you made us and designed us to be. Help us have the courage to be strong in our faith, and bold in our being Catholic. So together let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to begin a little by telling you a little stories, uh, story about my early childhood uh, and my walk uh, to be where I am today. Uh, when I was in first grade, I went to St. Matthew's Catholic Church in, in Champaign, and I went there through eighth grade. Most of the time I spent there, I spent... Uh, disobeying the teachers, doing exactly what I shouldn't be doing, all of the things um, disobedient children do. Uh, and I spent a lot of time at it and was quite good at it, to be truthful. Um, and I, as I grew older and I, and I continued down my walk in life, I realized, having been married and having some children, that this life was a lot bigger than just me. I realized finally for the first time that um, I was struggling and couldn't understand why I was in such bad shape. Um, and I, I continued to fight and resist going back to the church. Um, my wife constantly reminded me of the vows that we made in our wedding and, and all of the different ways that I had promised to God in different different ways that I would be there and I had not taken my promises serious. And it's not till one day finally I went on a, a Curcio weekend and it changed my life. It made me see a lot of things uh, in a much better light. But it what it ended up doing for me is it boiled down to the final question uh, is who is Jesus uh, and why did he come to this earth or world? Why, why go to all that trouble? Um, the, the, the God that made the, the world, the universe, everything that we know, why would he lower himself to come to this place? Um, so the, the Catechism of the Catholic Church gives four reasons why Jesus did this. Um, if you want to further read on this in the Catechism, uh, if you go into Catechism, it's um, paragraph 456 through 463 in section 3. Uh, you can do some extra reading on this, but uh, I just wanted to briefly go through it. Uh, the Catechism, like I said, gives four reasons. The first reason uh, that Jesus came to earth was in order to save us by reconciling us to God. The second one is so that we might know God's love. And the third one is to be a model for holiness. Fourth one, to make us partakers of the divine nature. So I want to go through these just a little bit and very briefly uh, to help us to understand what they mean. Um, so the first one is in order, to, God came to the earth in order to save us by reconciling us to God. 
So what that means, um, is that we had fallen through original sin. Adam and Eve in the garden had rejected God's fatherhood, God's love, and did exactly what God told them not to do. And then, by not coming to God and asking for forgiveness, they were cast out of the perfect world, the Garden of Eden. From that day forward, we always had the stain of original sin. Uh, all of mankind has had it since. Um, and since we have that, it put a great space between us and God, a, a chasm, if you will, that we could not get to God because we had separated ourselves from God. The entire human race had separated. The only way to bridge that gap was for the God-man Jesus to come by and take away the sins of the world and bridge that gap so that there was a way to get back to God. So that's one of the reasons why he came, is to bridge the gap for us and reconcile us to God. The second one is so that we might know God's love. God had tried, if you read through the whole Testament, excuse me, the whole Old Testament, God tried so hard to explain to the Israelites, the chosen people, what he, what the, the different uh, ways that he, uh, with the different covenants and all the different ways that he had come to them, what he was trying to get them to see and, and how he wanted them to act. And they continually messed it up. They, they didn't do it right. They, they always found ways to worship idols and to do other things. Very similar to how us humans act today, If to be honest. We always can find ways to do anything in the world than to follow God. But the Israelites did the very same thing. Jesus came to the world, to this earth, because he needed us to know that God loves us. And he needed to be one of us, to speak our language, to actually walk the earth, to be with us, to be our friend, to be our uh, brother. And he, he needed to be here to explain to us, to show us what, they, what, what God needed from us and how to do it. And then the third one is to be a model for holiness. If we don't understand who God is, we can never live up to what he expects from us. Jesus, therefore, came to earth to give us an example of how to be holy. What holy things were indeed important. What things were not exactly as important as, as some of the Pharisees or uh, the Sanhedrin had put on them that they were so worried about their outward appearance that the inside of them was rotted to the core, that we have to be pure of heart to go forth for Christ. And God sent his son to show us how to be holy. And then number four, to make us partakers of the divine nature. So to explain that, what I want to do is I think I want to go through a little bit of the following lesson, which will be on baptism. And what does it mean to be a partaker of the divine nature? Partaker of the divine nature, I think, would be um, to have some of God in us. And, and so... To make of us partakers would be to show us what it means to have that. Um, so, for instance, in baptism, um, just as Jesus, God took on human life, so in baptism, we take on a divine life. So what baptism is for us, it's the foundation of for all other things that we do. It's the foundation for the Eucharist, the foundation for 
um, the reconciliation, for confirmation, for all of the sacraments. The, the, the baptism is the foundation. Without baptism, you cannot go any further. Um, just lately in the news, even, there was a story of a, uh, a priest that uh, watched a video of his um, ordination, and, or excuse me, not his ordination, of his baptism, and realized that when the, I believe it was a deacon, did the baptism, he didn't say the correct words uh, at the beginning, it, when, he, when he poured the, the water over uh, his head, which made the sacrament invalid. So what they had to do is go back, and he actually has not properly baptized, which meant he wasn't, he had never had First Communion properly, he had never had confirmation properly, and he wasn't actually um, confirmed, nor did not have the true sacrament of holy orders, because baptism was not officially correct in the matter and form. So they had to go back and do all of that and redo it, and that's how serious it was, and that's how serious it is for us to be baptized. Um, but it builds on everything. Without baptism, according to Jesus' words, he says, Go out and therefore and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He also says that without baptism, it is impossible to enter heaven. And that's why we believe as Catholics that baptism is so big a deal. And why we do it at, at, at uh, the infant age is because we want to make sure that all of us have the indwelling of Christ inside of us. To, to give us that opportunity to go into heaven and be with Christ forever. So just a, another thing, just as Jesus gave his life for us, so we the baptized are called to give our lives for him. We are called to give our lives to Christ. We are called to be his hands, his feet, uh, and everything that he was on earth to the rest of the earth. Um, so to be baptized is a big deal and that is in fact why uh, all of these things come together and we go forth as Christians into the world to help everyone else understand how much God loves us how much he's given for us uh, and who he is and all the beautiful things the graces that come to us are because of his never-ending love for us. So just to finish up a little bit, um, I noticed in the book it also said the saint of the week is uh, St. Paul. So I um, encourage you to read some of the letters of St. Paul, some of the very beautiful writings St. Paul writ, uh, wrote in the uh, some of the letters some letters to the Romans, letters to Galatians, some of the, all those, there's some really good stuff in there. Um, I encourage you to read those. I encourage you to take some time with your children and teach them about Christ, to love them like Christ does. And as uh, a former priest told me a long time ago, to not bruise the tender reed, to teach, to love the children and they will bear fruit. So may God bless each and every one of you and your families in, in this crazy time. I pray that he can be with you always. Amen.